funny to see something this big move this quickly. Hey, what kind of car are you driving? I'm driving an apocalypse. Say hello to my big giant friend. Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Rather unusual vehicle this week. The Apocalypse Hellfire 6x6. Six six. Say you're married and your wife needs something to take the kids to school or run to the market, but she's not popular and you need something that's bulletproof. Maybe you got a couple extra wheels just to get. This is the thing to do. This is a, a heavily modified uh, Jeep. Uh, I'm going to bring the gentleman who built it. Uh, these things are amazing to me. This is, uh, <laughs> this is what. A Europeans think all Americans drive around it. You know, stuff like this. You got your gun, you got your, you got your six by six. And you know, the roads here in LA are so bad, this is what you need anyway. So uh, let's find out exactly what it is. Joe Gaddis. Joe, come on in, Joe. Now, you, you own the Jeep dealer, but you own Apocalypse is your company, right? Yeah, okay. Apocalypse Manufacturing. Apocalypse Manufacturing. You've built like, what, 78 of these so far? We've built 78 to date. This is number 79, and we've got okay. 16 in the box. Okay, so you start, you're a Jeep dealer, so you start with. What is that, a, uh, a Jeep? What, what? So we start with the cabin of a Gladiator. Cabin of Gladiator. And then we modify the whole back end of the frame. Right. And then this part here we fabricate from scratch in-house. Uh, the fenders we make them in-house, the hood, the, the back end, this top and whatnot. And uh, we make it into an apocalypse. Now you have two engines available. You have the, the, the Hellcat motor, yep. correct? Or what, a Corvette uh, 500 horse? Yeah, we do a 500 horsepower LS3, LS3 uh, V8. Okay. We do. We actually do the three-liter twin-turbo diesel too, if you want. Oh, okay. And then the the Hellcat is definitely the most popular. It's the most noise. And oh, power. it is. Oh, yeah. yeah. I would think the diesel would be pretty popular. No? For me, I love the diesel. Yeah. It's yeah. very reliable and it's a little workhorse, but the, the Hellcat's definitely the most popular. All right, so. <laughs> What what size tire? 35s? These are 40s. These are 40. 40 by 15 and a half inches wide, wrapped on 22 okay. by 14 inch rims. Six of them because you need that. And you build these in Fort Lauderdale, correct? Yeah. Uh, which makes me laugh. I don't think a Fort Lauderdale is a manufacturing center. <laughs> but I mean, it seems like driving around in Florida. Is it, do you ever get pulled over? Cops just think it's too big or they try to get you for some infraction. I mean, oh it, sure. <laughs> yeah, that yeah just the other day we were in Beverly Hills and yeah. I, he pulled us over and he said, "Well, you you need like a CDL license or something to drive." He's like, "I'm, I'm not sure what you're doing wrong, but uh, but I know there's something." You're doing something. <laughs> they know you're doing something wrong. They're not sure what it is. Yeah. Well, then they take a couple that. pictures. <laughs> now, do you need a separate truck license for more than four wheels? I know no, not, no, you don't. No, as long as we're under the weight. The the vehicle's relatively light. It's just under six thousand pounds. Oh, just six thousand pounds. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. And obviously, do all custom. Now, can someone get a bare bones without? This one has a beautiful sort of. You've got all kinds of nice leather and all. Of, if I said I, I, I want it strictly utilitarian. Can I get it without all of this? Just to stand absolutely. It? Yes. Absolutely. Any way you want it, huh? Yeah. Any color you want, you pick out the interior colors and, and even the, the bed back if you like to change that too. Right. Now I mentioned, it's not, this one is not bulletproof, is it or isn't it? No, it's no. a Kevlar coating, it's Kevlar a three-part epoxy, right. uh, but I wouldn't shoot at it. Right, oh, okay. Well, maybe okay for small caliber. Small, yeah, 22, you might, you might live to that. Anything above 30 caliber, you want to go to the next model. Exactly. <laughs> It's all wheel drive, so yep. all six wheels engage, correct? Absolutely, okay. and that, that's that middle axle. We actually hand manufacture that axle right in our place. So do you have two drive shafts, is that how it works? No, yeah, not at all. No transfer case, no second drive shaft. Uh, the power comes into this axle right through the front, which you know looks very similar to a Ford 9-inch, Right. and then the pinion extends right through the casing out the back, a single one-to-one -one drive out the back, and then there's another yoke and feeds to the rear one. And you choose also the uh, the 500 horse Corvette motor. Oh yeah, that's the most popular. Yeah? A lot of noise, a lot of fun. Yeah, well you can't say people won't see you coming, that's for sure. Right. How, how many speeds, now a manual is not available, right? We can do a many if like, yeah. uh, because of the weight and the horsepower, you burn through you know, clutches relatively quickly. Really? The okay. eight speed transmission out of a, a Ram 3500 is what powers this thing right now. Okay, and that can take all kinds of speed. Oh yeah. Much more than a clutch, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, okay. I, I mean, it looks beautifully well made. I mean, it's just, it is imposing, and I guess that's the reason <laughs> people buy it. Oh, yeah. How many customers actually go off-road? Do, do a lot of people just use it? To At do? some point in the ownership experience, you go off-roading in it. Right. But is it their daily thing? No, mostly, you know, protect them from zombies and... Right, you know. right, okay, yeah, yeah, it's the world we live in. Oh, it's pretty amazing, okay. And the interior is pretty, pretty much stock or... 
a few modifications on the inside. You know, we have the lighting switch control panel there, but the biggest one is that screen there. That's an infrared night vision camera you can control and, and zip it around 360. So it's infrared, you can see what's going on at night. All right. Let, let's open the hood and see how that engine fits in there. Can you get just paint too, or does it all come with this sort of? You can. Yeah, we is can. It's a matte finish. What do you call this? I call it Kevlar. It's like a oh, three-part epoxy with a Kevlar okay. fiber in it. Real rugged and low maintenance. Yeah. And there she is. That's the LS3. Okay, prepare stock LS3. So that's pretty bulletproof, isn't it? Yeah. Slightly modified. We actually get them from a company called Bruiser. Right. And they do the the, the converted motor for us, and it's it's really such a seamless, headache-free uh, drop-in. And they, they have little cams and whatnot. They get 500 horsepower out of it. Yeah. We're running off the factory PCM. There's no you know piggybacks or any of that converter stuff. So it's a very reliable setup. So you got 500 horsepower and a eight-speed. Yeah, eight-speed automatic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And of course, you do this as well. This this piece fits on over the. Yeah, you need a quarter inch steel protection around the windshield, right? Yeah, I guess you, <laughs> I guess you do. Limits the vision a little bit, but definitely yeah. protects you from branches. Now, I imagine that you must do a lot of overseas sales, Saudi Arabia and the Middle East and that type of thing. Yeah, in Dubai, we, we sold quite a few of them over there, and uh, we just sold four to some place in Africa. Let's take a look at the, the bed here. Yeah, so this is a full steel enclosure. We call this our. Uh, Roll and lock fastback. That's kind of like the Cybertruck a little bit. Isn't yeah, it? I was yeah. waiting for you to say that. It's, huh? I, I definitely stole some of the, the idea from there. I think right. it's brilliant. It's a lot of space. So this is all metal in here. So right. if, when you do lock it, and this space, you can put anything you want. You, some yeah. people want 40 gallon uh, extra fuel tank in there. They want a water reservoir. So what were you building before this? Obviously, you're a mechanic, you're a car guy. Uh, I mean, you, you were a Jeep dealer, and then you got this idea, or did you become a Jeep dealer after you got this idea? I mean, how did that, how did that work? So we, we, were, we were a Jeep dealer right. building uh, custom trucks, and we, we got further and further into just more custom, more wild, and then started swapping out motors and throwing Hellcats and anything right. else in there. You even did an electric Jeep. Just natural progression, we just started trying different stuff. We said, what about six wheels? Right. You know, and we started exploring that asset, and then as far as the, how they make them six-wheel drive, we we did a Mercedes conversion, took a G-Wagon and made it a six-wheel drive Mercedes. And I didn't like how it was done with the extra transfer case and the drive shaft going over this one. It was very messy and right. noisy at high speeds and whatnot. And we got into making our own axle to get this thing streamlined. Wait, well, on 79 of them. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And how long, <laughs> like if I ordered one, how long would it take to get it built? So I can have one from order to finished in three weeks. Really? Yes. And the reason for that is I've always got 10 to 15 of them where the frame is done. Right. The cab is off. Motors just, you know, take your pick, drop a motor in. Right. And from, from word go, colors, motor, and leather, we're three weeks out. And what state's your biggest market? Is it Texas? California. Oh, California. Go yeah. figure, California. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. And obviously you just registered as a Jeep. Yeah, registered as, as a Gladiator. Right. Uh, with your insurance, you know, you add the modifications and whatnot. And that's uh, a infrared camera up there, right? Is that what that is? Yeah. We've somebody's, got... You can see somebody's hiding in the bushes with a howitzer or something. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Or if you're into hunting, you know, you can see critters yeah. in the bush, you know? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. And you shut it just by pulling this, eh? Yeah, just pull it right down, lock her up. Oh, that's pretty good. You can turn this here? Yep. Okay, and then just... So I guess you could sleep in that. Could you? Could you get it if you're inside? Can you get out from the inside? I haven't tried. Have you tried <laughs> I haven't tried. Cool. Let's see what else have we got here. Obviously, massive. Although, what are these tires off of? Where do they come from? So they're little mud grapplers. Okay. Uh, they're made for you know like a 3,500 size truck. Okay. And obviously, we have to replace all the axles throughout this thing right, and trusses right. and whatnot to be able to support them. We run a 513 gear ratio in this thing. 513. 513. Very aggressive. This thing will, you know, will rip right out of the hole. Right, right. And with eight speed, you still get a reasonable cruising speed. Don't yeah. You? Yeah. Is there a street tire, a more street tire that's available? Absolutely. Yeah. We, we do it in a 38-inch 38, uh, 38 Patagonia that's a lot quieter right. and more tame and more for the highway all the time. Okay, what else have we got here? Let's see. And, and this, how do you apply it? Like regular paint? Is it spray on? Is it? It is a spray on, but it comes out of a, a heated hose where they combine the three elements. Right. And, and when it gets to the gun, it's mixed right then and there. It comes out about 220 degrees. Right. It hits the car, it cools down, and it's solid right then and there. Oh, I see. Okay. Let's talk about the uh, suspension. 
pretty basic off-road or ultra sophisticated what do we have here i wouldn't say ultra sophisticated just very redundant and, and simple right um so we run running falcon shocks uh we've you know two sets of springs in the rear two track bars uh custom uh, control arms to straighten everything out uh it's got uh, eight inches of travel upward and about 13 inches of travel downward. It's got a lot of downward travel for full articulation. You notice these wheels are super close to each other. Right. Closer together drives better. Right. right? The way we have the, the differentials and, the, and the, the clutch packs inside of them so that you can make a U-turn and move the power over to one side and the other. But also off-road, you want this wheel to be able to go all the way down, this one go all the way up. You see some six-wheelers out there that uh, it's less off-road capable than a regular four-wheeler, right? And that's not what we're going for. This thing needs to caterpillar over absolutely everything. I'm amazed at how much, how wide open those springs are. Yeah, they have to be. I mean, it's, it's yeah, to get a lot of okay. The idea is that you know the truck's not actually that tall. This thing's only got a three and a half inch lift over factory. Yeah. Uh, but you know, a huge fender well so that it can travel up a lot. Now, can I go to front wheel only or four wheel, or is it? So all the time you have the, the rear four driven. Okay. And then you can select over the front one and okay. bring it so in. Okay, so these are always drive where you can't. Always together, yeah. yeah. And you want them that way because drivability, if you don't have all four rear powered, it, it does funny stuff. You want right. all four in the back pushing. Yeah. And you can do that on the fly. There's no hub to turn or anything. Yeah, right on the fly. Yeah, yeah. Right up under 50 miles an hour, you can select it in. Well, that's a standard Jeep Exactly. Part. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Any military uh, interest in this? No, not yet. No? Not yet. Yeah. yeah, and then you got to run on, was it JPA? So then they would probably want the diesel. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of deal. Okay. So what does uh, Jeep think of this? They tolerate it or? They absolutely tolerate it. Yeah, yeah. They, they absolutely tolerate it. Uh, they mentioned us in their publications, Mopar Magazine and whatnot. Right, so right. we know they're well aware of us. Right, right. Uh, and we do sell them at some Jeep dealerships. Right. Obviously, it voids everything and anything out of the, you know, the original VIN chassis that we started right, with. Right, right. I mean, think about it. What's left over? You've just got the cabin. Right. The, the bed is manufactured. The top's manufactured. You've got a different engine, transmission, drive shafts, axles. There's nothing left. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Okay. And then you have your own warranty. Right. We, are, we give a three-year warranty on all of them. We marry these things when yeah, they roll yeah, out. Yeah. Your shop must be enormous to have 78 of these lying around. It's yeah, we're, we're, we're a decent size. You know, we've yeah. got a crew of about 45 mechanics oh, now. We've got that many people, huh? Yeah, wow, yeah. everybody's cool. cooking. And you're from Georgia. Which I'm thinking New York. I don't know why I'm thinking Bronx somewhere. <laughs> I'm thinking like a New York guy. No, I'm from Marietta, Georgia. Marietta, Georgia. Okay, well, there yeah. you go. I started working on cars with my dad. Our first one was a, a Suzuki Samurai that we oh, yeah. turned into an electric Did car. Did your dad have a shop too? No, just uh, home tinkering. Oh, okay. Well, he must be pretty proud of you. This is a pretty big business, huh? Pretty he cool. says it's not quite there yet. You know? Well, <laughs> you know, the parents, you know, you never go. But that's good. Cool. All right, can we take it for a spin? Absolutely. Let's do it. Let's see what she does. It's going to be fun. This is a big truck. You know, you're thinking, can I fit in that space? You're just doing that all the time. Kind of cool, this opens up into a full convertible. And you got airbags and everything else in here. You're never quite sure where, where everything is. But mirrors are good. The rear view is a camera. Apocalypse seems like an odd name for a vehicle. In fact, there's a big uh, nuclear holocaust right in the center of the steering wheel there, a big explosion going on with a mushroom cloud. Well, you know, a lot of cars used to have doomsday names. You had the Studebaker, Studebaker Dictator. That was a real car. Yeah, I'm driving a Dictator. A Dictator. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. It seems to be all quality pieces on this thing. Falcon suspension pieces and I mean it feels like a factory vehicle. It's tight. Everything seems to work as he says. You feel like Tony Montana pulling up from the disco in this thing. Say hello to my big giant friend. No 
Now, once you're in it, there's nothing unusual about it. It doesn't feel particularly unwieldy or anything. Six wheels seem to perform fine. I can't, can't help your gas mileage much, but I think if you're buying this thing, I don't think you worry too much about gas mileage. I should show this to my buddy Offset. He would like this. This is his kind of vehicle. What about a parallel park, this thing? Hey, what kind of car are you driving? I'm driving an apocalypse. I was going to trade it in my nuclear holocaust to get a new apocalypse. Well, it's, it certainly handles any better than it has a right to. I mean, it's it's so funny. With power steering and power brake, it drives just like any other car. Boy, you hear those tires on the road howling. Hey, you can dig up some golf courses with this thing. You know, at first glance, a lot of people might mistake this for a cyber truck. But you know, off-roading is the hottest segment of the uh, automotive market right now, and this is a good example of why. People just go crazy for this stuff. I feel like Jerry Reed driving this thing, when they're playing westbound and down, eastbound and down, or west, eastbound and down. I think that's the name of the song, isn't it? Funny to see something this big move this quickly. I mean, it handles okay. Impressive. We well, got plenty, plenty of stopping power with all those wheels and all those discs. You know, we actually got to drive this once before, uh, about a week ago on our CNBC show, which should be on the air and no, well, pretty pretty soon. And you'll know, see what it, how it goes in the dirt. I gotta say, it's quite comfortable. It's amazing how car-like trucks and Jeeps have become. I mean, this is, for all intents and purposes, a luxury car. It just happens to have six giant wheels and be 100 feet off the ground. But it's comfortable, air conditioning, no radio, everything you need, electric amenities, everything. You get a bit of tire noise from these big 38 size tires. But not terrible. Joe seems like a pretty straight shooter, seems to know his stuff. You know, a lot of times we get PR flags that come on. They don't really know the vehicle. They, they just know all the talking points. That's right, Jay. It's a 5.2 liter, you know, that type of thing. But he's a builder, owner, salesman, the whole deal. He's got 45 people working for him, so that's impressive. I suppose it's practical. I, I think you can make a case for that. But, with a spouse, you know, oh, honey, look at all the stuff we can put in the back, go to Home Depot, get lumber, go camping, take the kids, you know. I mean, it does handle nice, it's not all over the road. I, I'm surprised. I would just think if you, if you blindfolded me and put this in and, and put me in it, I wouldn't guess that it was six wheels or, was the, or that it was this big from being either the passenger seat or the driver's seat. It's funny, the trucks are the biggest selling segment of the market these days. Whether it's off-road things like this or just regular F-150s, 250s, TRX, any of them. I mean, that's what sells. Cars don't really sell much anymore. And I've driven a couple of vehicles like similar to this, you know, and you hit the brakes and you're pitching left and right and you're trying to control the steering as well. This thing stops right on the dime, boom. Probably wonder why I picked this vehicle this week. Uh, it's not really my type of vehicle, but I like the whole idea behind it. I like the idea that a guy who fixed cars with his dad starts his own shop and turns into a business that has 45 people, and he's turned out 79 of these already, and he ships them all over the world, Saudi Arabia, because that's kind of the American dream, you know? For a lot of guys, I wasn't good enough to work with cars, so I went into show business. But I probably, would, if I was a good engineer or a good mechanic, it's something I would have enjoyed doing. I love the fact that Joe has designed this himself and built it himself, using all quality stuff. And he turns out a premium vehicle. I think that's impressive. So, you know, that's what uh, the entrepreneurial spirit is all about. So, Joe, thanks for coming on the show, my friend. We appreciate it. Uh, that's the website on the side. If you're interested in one, uh, you can build whatever you want. So. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week.